from the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas. It's theCUBE, covering .next conference 2016. Brought to you by Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back everybody. This is theCUBE, we're here live. This is our second day of coverage of the .next Nutanix conference. A lot of action going on here. Joris Vouvray is here. He's the head of networking and systems management at Swiss Loss. Yes, that's it, Sue. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to theCUBE. So, yeah. Swiss Loss, tell everybody what Swiss, Swiss Loss is all about. So, Swiss Loss is a Swiss lottery based in Basel, uh, in the north of Switzerland, and we're doing uh, traditional lotteries, uh, instant tickets, uh, sport betting, horse races betting too. Uh, we have like 6,000 points of sales in Switzerland, uh, 3,000 from our of point of sales of online uh, connect to our data centers. And uh, we also have our own gaming platform on premise, uh, running on Nutanix with uh, almost 600,000 uh, registered users or players. Yeah. So, lottery is a big deal because uh, we are a non profit organization gathering get money for the, for the common goods in Switzerland. And uh, we're making one million uh, Swiss francs profits each day. So, it's, uh, we have to keep the pace and, and make sure everything's running in the IT to, to have happy customers. Well, in the last 10 years, online gaming has yeah. exploded. It um, is. And it's, it's an interesting dynamic because there's obviously you know, some local opposition, there's, you know, that's regulated, like you say, yeah. you're a nonprofit. Uh, yeah. t talk about the dynamic in the industry and how you guys got started and how you're growing. So it's a very old company, so it, it grew up from sport betting, actually, and then we had, a, we had a, many companies, other companies doing instant tickets, and we went all together to build Swiss Loss for a couple of years. And uh, we, are, we are doing all the IT by ourselves, just the software development is, is done externally. And internet is, is becoming more and more important with, uh, with the generation changes. People want to play mobile, people want to play on the internet. So it's, it's a big deal to, to keep the pace with that. And to also have uh, interactive games on the internet. So for that, you have to have a very good background infrastructure, having system which gives uh, good uh, answer times and, and all that stuff has, has to be run in milliseconds. You know, so it's it's a big deal, and that's the reason why we are always looking at a modern way to do IT, to simplify things, and and to make things run run as easy as possible. So, paint a picture, if you would of the infrastructure and the sort of applications that it supports? Yeah. What does it look like? So the, the workload we are running on Nutanix is mainly a web workload like Tomcat server, GBoss web servers, or backend servers. We're not running any big databases on, on Nutanix. Uh, we're running Splunk on Nutanix, so big Splunk indexers, for example, but uh, not databases like Oracle or other big database. And um, we have two data centers, so two production blocks, each with five nodes, 20 terabyte of uh, Nutanix storage. It's a hybrid storage with SSDs and, and SATA disks. And we also have a test block to test everything. So the, 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 the goal with Nutanix was uh, to forget our infrastructure, as Nutanix is saying, to have an invisible infrastructure to, to gain times for the engineer to focus on other goals and managing storage area networks and all that stuff. So uh, I think it's like, you know, uh, the David Allen way to go to, to forget things or getting things done another way to write everything down and forget it. It's, it's the same for Nutanix to install your system and then forget them to, to be able to focus on the application and, and having happy customers. Can you give us a little bit of a before and after? You know, what, what yes. did your infrastructure look like? You know, how many people do you have? Yeah. What were they yeah. doing their time? And you know, the, the picture after. So the team of engineers is like six guys doing that, that stuff. So we, before we had traditional blade servers and uh, HP storage, uh, fiber channel storage. And uh, we always bought new shelves, new disks to grow the storage because of our needs. And uh, after sometimes you, you notice that this will come to this end of life, the, the life cycle of the, the product will be come to an end and you have to change everything. So when we talk about that with my boss, uh, the idea popped up to, to, to do these things differently and to find another solution. And we also wanted to run all of our workload, which is mainly most of the time based on Linux machines, on the Linux uh, hypervisor. So we went to the market and had a look at what was around and Nutanix was the only solution to bring us uh, the KVM uh, solution and VM management all in one box. 
Yeah, but you know, the, the Acropolis hypervisor was only announced last year, and, and you yeah. were actually a beta customer of it. So, you know, can you walk us through? I mean, it's something unproven. I mean, you know, Linux KVM's been around for a while, yeah. but you know, how, how did you how did you convince management <laughs> to go with this? How did you even find it in the first place? That was a, that was not easy, but uh, we, we made a POC with Nutanix, and we were amazed how this hardware was performing and. Or KVM F was efficient for our workload. And uh, we, we spoke with Nutanix and told, is there maybe something missing for the management of the VM? We'd like to have something really easy, and you only had KVM, but not the management of the VM on top of it. And uh, a guy called Bass, uh, our, our engineer in Europe, told me, yes, you know, there's something around. You just have to wait a little bit, and you'll have early access to this, and uh, we'll make sure you'll be happy with the product. So. It was called Acropolis, so we had early access to Acropolis in October 2014. We've installed it in two days, made the training of the teams, and I think two weeks after, we began to move um, virtual machines in production uh, on top of Acropolis. A so relatively HV. small team. Yeah, yeah. A and how did, the, how did their, their operations change, their workflow? So the workflow changed because uh, Nutanix is really easy to manage. I always said I could give an iPad to my kids and they will be able to manage uh, AHV and do that stuff. You know, they are, they are now um, most of the time playing Minecraft on their iPad, building blocks, and I hope they will build uh, Nutanix blocks later on their iPad too. But for, for the team, it's, it's like a move from a system administrator having to patch fiber channel, plug in storage, plug in servers to a more analytic way of doing IT and analyzing troubles in the application. So we, we can really focus on business application or business transactions that are important for us and, and focus on performance instead of having to have a look at hardware failure and all that stuff. And you said you're not running your, your database workloads on Nutanix? No, but uh, I've heard about the iSCSI stuff that Nutanix is bringing now, so we, we were to, to too early with our, our migration of our Oracle databases, but it's, it would be too expensive for us to to virtualize Nutanix and uh, virtualize Oracle on top of Nutanix. Yeah, because the database license cost. Yes, of course. Oracle is not um, cheap, so it's pretty expensive. So you have to license your world clusters, and as a non-profit organization, we, we were not able to do that. Yeah. So what do you Oracle run on? They, they run we run on our Oracle uh, on, on Oracle, or? Oracle uh, database appliances. Yeah. yeah, so they you can cut your license cost in yes. half. Yes, we, we could optimize our license with, with that, yeah. Yeah, so that's, it's interesting. We have a lot of folks on, a lot of clients we work with that have that same, same yeah. issue. It's just, yeah. Is what it is. I mean, it's a very large component of your TCO is the Oracle yeah. license and maintenance cost, and so. Yeah. And that's what we appreciate be with Nutanix. You know, we are a small company, so we can go to Oracle and tell them you have to change something because we can't afford this. Whereas with Nutanix, we we had a good good partnership. We could bring new, we could give us our feedback to Nutanix for Acropolis and 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 for example, bring things that, that we needed uh, as an early adopter, and it, it's a really, really great partnership. Yeah, so, George, you, you talked about kind of the operational impact. What, what about the, from the economic standpoint? Many out there, our feedback from the community is hyperconvergence is great, yep. but it's not cheap, it's not necessarily, yeah. you know, from a CapEx standpoint, less yeah, expensive. What, what, what's the overall economic picture look like for you? I've heard that many times. I mean, I, I've talked with many people here, all saying, yeah, it, it's, it's maybe good, but it's maybe too expensive, or I don't know, but uh, we wanted to choose the best product that fits for us. So I mean, the in investment was not that huge, and it, uh, if you have a look at the simplicity of the solutions, there was a huge gain in time for for the engineers, and a, a huge return of investment when you have a Nutanix uh, blocks running because you don't you can just forget it, and with other solution you have to do drivers updates or firmware updates or whatever, and losing a lot of time with, with that, and also. One aspect which is important for me is the power and cooling. I mean, when you have huge blade servers or huge core switches, it's using a lot of power and, and it needs also a lot of cooling. So we've also made so great improvement in that area for in yeah. our data centers. Yeah. Have you quantified that at all? I mean, I've talked to some Nutanix customers that get from you know ten racks yeah. down to one rack, or yeah, it's, it's like know. one rack to four units. Wow. Eight, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's huge. Yeah. So it's, it's, and, it's and a big deal, I mean. How do you, let's talk about performance. I mean, yeah. 
Performance to me is uh, I'm getting consistent, predictable performance. That's a good. Yep. Is that the right way to think about it? Or are you actually looking at it? No, I'm increasing my, I'm shrinking my footprint and increasing my performance. No, we're trying to increase performance all the time. I mean, uh, it's very important. So I think Docker will also be a big deal on Nutanix because you, you want to simplify everything. And Docker is also a way to simplify things and to make your application run uh, with better performance and, and also uh, better security. I mean, security is also a big challenge. And uh, that's, that's, that's also something that Nutanix changed in my company, to have the engineer be able to focus on performance and make things easy. So you're using containers today? No, no, not yet in okay. production. We've, we've made some experiment okay. experimentation, and I'm glad to hear that Nutanix will be integrating uh, Okay, so, so Nutanix. you feel you're, by the time the roadmap matures from Nutanix yeah. and you're using Yeah, I'm sure kind of we will use this feature, yeah. So what about security? Yep. Uh, you, Splunk customer, yep. obviously that's one of your primary use cases. Is yeah, so we are, we're using Splunk on, on top of Nutanix, so uh, security is a big deal for us because we are, we are certified for, for products like the Euromillion, for example. For, uh, so we have to be certified by the World Watch Association to sell some kind of products, and security is a big deal for us. So, so Nutanix was also important in that area because it's, it's bringing also security in the hypervisor and in the world solution, which was also important for us. I would imagine too, I mean, this whole idea of simplicity, yeah. making the infrastructure invisible, uh, dumbing it down, if you will, I mean, it's not, it's complex, but, but simplifying the infrastructure, what impact does that have on your ability to, to deal with security, respond to security incidents, spend more time on security, are you able to shift resources to, toward things like security, or so, are the skill sets too diverse? Yeah, it's, it's too diverse, I think, because security is, is another area, so, so it, it, it's nothing to do with these hyper-commerce things, but, but uh, the gain in time was mostly to focus on other things, and also one thing that's important when you look at Nutanix and take Nutanix and you suddenly have a gain of time to do other things, things other areas of IT that you'd like to change, it's making you disruptive too as, as administrator or as IT manager, thinking IT in another way and also trying to, to push disruptive products in other projects that you have to make things change and make things easier in other areas of your, of your IT Things, you know. So, so you're, you're pretty early on the adoption standpoint. What, where's the white space? What are you asking for the vendor community to help you kind of grow and, and move even faster? So we're, we're always asking to have things that run easy, and today everything is based on REST API and automation, so that's a big deal that we'd like now to, to do to automate things. Uh, we've been using, for example, Cisco ACI for a couple of time now, so I think now there's a, the big challenge is to make things stick together, integrate everything together, and, and make things easier as it, as it is now, yeah. So what's on Nutanix's to-do list from Sorry? your perspective? From, from your perspective, yeah. what do you want to see Nutanix do specifically? I mean, you were talking generically just then about yeah, I integration. Think, I think what's on their to-do list? I think container was a big deal, so we really wanted to see that, but um, I don't know. I'm see, I think the, the Nutanix uh, roadmap is going in the right direction. I'm, I w won't tell them what, uh, what I expect them to do because they're always one step forward. So, so they're always one step forward to our expectation. And uh, I think I was at a conf last year, and I have the feeling that it was five years ago because they're, they're, they're bringing so much new features uh, that, that it's, it's just crazy. I mean, the announcements today or yesterday, that's, that's, that's just everything that we expected Nutanix to do. So I, I, I want to allow me to tell Nutanix what they have to do. Another happy customer. We'll give you the yeah. last word, you know, your experience here this, this week, second uh, dot, uh, dot next conference. Yeah. What are you going to tell your colleagues when you get back? What have you learned? Oh, I, I've learned a lot of things. I mean, uh, the announcement at the keynotes, that, that was just huge. And uh, I will tell my colleagues that they'll, they'll get a gain of time next year, maybe, to do all the things that they are now spending time on them. Yeah. What about the announcement was most intriguing to you? Uh, Docker is for me is the, is the uh -huh. biggest deal, yeah. As I said, it's 
it was native very Docker, important. Yeah. persistence. Yeah, persistent storage for containers. Yeah. That's a big deal, and that was an issue for me before. Yeah. And doing that inside of Nutanix natively and taking yeah. advantage of all the simplicity yeah. and okay, good. Also, self-provisioning is a, is a great great feature. Yeah. George, th thanks very much for coming to the Thank Cube. Thank you. All right, guys. Good to see you again. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. This is the Cube. We're live from the Win in Las Vegas at .next. Right back. Thank you.